Hi everyone, this is Rohan and in this video, I am going to talk about green buildings. So let's start with a simple question. Is this a green building? That is, the picture that you are seeing on your screen, is it a green building? Well, the answer is maybe yes, maybe no. Because just by looking at the exterior of a building, just because it has some uh, foliage around it or some trees around it or maybe just because it's green in color doesn't make it a green building. So that brings us to the question, what is a green building? Now, a green building is a building that in its design, construction and operation reduces or eliminates negative impacts and can create positive impacts on our climate and natural environment. Let's go over it one more time. So a green building is a building that in its design, construction and operation, so starting from the design to the construction phase to the time when it has, it has been given to the occupants and it is operational, it has to reduce or eliminate the negative impacts on the environment and it has to create the positive impacts on the climate and environment. Now, there are certain benefits of green buildings which are tangible and certain things which are intangible. So, a green building ensures enhanced air quality, excellent daylighting, health and well-being of the occupants, safety benefits and conservation of scarce natural resources. Now, these are certain things we cannot directly put a number to. But there are definitely some certain tangible benefits to green buildings, which are, according to Indian Green Building Council, the energy savings in a green building could range from 20 to 30 percent, and the water savings in a green building could range from 30 to 50 percent. That means from day one of operation, you can just save this much of energy as well as on water costings. To make one more thing clear, any building can be a green building. Now, whether it is a home or an office, a school or a hospital, a shopping mall or any type of structure, provided it includes the features of a green building. Which brings us to the point that what are the features of a green building? So let's see them one by one. Number one is that a green building should be design and construction efficiency. That is, it should preserve the trees on the site or at least try to transport it and replant it at a different site. It should have soil erosion control and it should have prevention of surrounding natural topography and vegetation, etc. Secondly, it should be water efficient. That means it should have rainwater harvesting, water efficient plumbing fixtures, etc. Thirdly, it should be energy efficient. That is, it should use renewable energy like solar energy and it should use non-ozone depleting sub substances for refrigeration purposes, etc. Then, it should be material sufficient. That means, the materials used for its construction should be non-toxic, they should be ethically obtained and they should be sustainable in nature. A green building should also improve the indoor environmental quality. Now the indoor env environmental quality consists of three things. One is the air quality, the second is thermal quality and the third is the lighting quality. A green building should ensure the improvement of all these three qualities. Next, a green building should have waste reduction. It should have reduction of waste of energy, materials and water. And it should have also provision for recycling solutions of different waste products. And lastly, and according to me, it's one of the most important features of a green building because all of the above uh, features can be provided in a green building. But if it is not operating properly, and if it is not maintained properly, then we cannot really call it as a green building. So therefore, it is very important uh, feature of the green building that is the operations and maintenance, which will ensure the proper working and 
timely maintenance of all the green technologies provided by the engineers or architectures now even after if even uh, if a building has these features one cannot directly declare it as a green building on their own for that we have the green building rating systems now this green building rating systems are performance credit systems that provide green certifications and ratings to the buildings so you have to have a green certification rating from one of these rating systems or councils to be called as a green building you cannot just declare that on your own okay now what they do is they allocate certain points to specific green criterions now let's have a look into this with an example now the indian green building council igbc they have the following point allocation if you see the green criterion sustainable architecture and design has been allotted 5 points site selection and planning has 14 points water conservation has 18 points energy efficiency has been allocated 28 points 16 points has been given to building materials and resources 12 for indoor environmental quality and 7 for innovation and development if you add this up it gives you a total of 100 points now before moving on to this just look at this seven green criterions does it remind you of something yes these are nothing but the features of a green building of course the language is a little different okay the the terminology may be a little different but more or less these green criterions are nothing but the features of a green building again if you see all of this points is kind of vague like water conservation has been given 18 points now how do you bifurcate those 18 points here each criterion has been bifurcated into sub criterions for example i'll just take the example of water conservation the 18 points of water conservation actually consists of 5 points water efficiency plumbing fixtures 5 points wastewater treatment and reuse 4 points for rainwater harvesting 2 points for landscape design 1 point for management of irrigation systems and 1 point for water metering so if you add this up you get to this 18 now obviously every building will not be able to provide all of these facilities isn't it so therefore this igbc will give them rating based on how many of this criteria they are fulfilling so maybe some building may get 10 out of 18 some building may get 16 out of 18 so on and so forth so these are the points allocated and based on whatever the criterions a building is providing they will get the points okay now if you add all of these points then what you get is the basis for the green building certification so out of 100 how much a building is scoring will be the basis of the green building certification again i'll show you the same for igbc so if a building scores between 40 to 49 points then it will get a certification level as certified and it will be recognized as best practices now if it scores between 50 to 59 it will have a silver certification with a recognition of outstanding performance if it lies between 60 to 74 it will get a gold certification with a recognition of national excellence and if it falls within 75 to 100 then it will have a platinum certification level with a recognition of global leadership now please understand for simplicity i have only taken the example for new green buildings owner occupied buildings this is one criteria amongst various other criterias available with igbc now do you think that an existing building okay that an existing building should have the same criteria as a new building no again a factory building whether should have the same criteria for a shopping mall obviously no so therefore there are various different sets of credit systems which are available for different category of buildings i'll not go into details of this but i'll try to touch this upon with the help of some examples of green building so let's start 
The number one is Seawood's Grand Central Mall located in Navi Mumbai and it has a IGBC rating of platinum and the category it falls under is green interiors. Now, as you can see, this is a shopping mall and on the right hand side, this is Inspire BKC, which is a commercial building located in Bandra Kurla complex of Mumbai and it has an IGBC rating of gold. You see here below the category is written as new buildings tenant occupied. Okay, I gave you the example for new building owner occupied. Okay, now new building tenant occupied, if I want to say in local language, it would be basically commercial buildings. Okay, so it has a gold rating. The previous one had a platinum rating. Now, again, a few more example. Here you see I have an example of Jason's Industries Limited from Chennai. It has a silver rating in the category of factory building. So factory buildings also can have a green building rating. Furthermore, this is an example of Anand Sarovar in Mount Abu Rajasthan. This is a residential society which has got a platinum rating. Furthermore, here we have Happiness Awadi from Chennai. It has a platinum rating in affordable housing. So even affordable housings, housings have green ratings. And last, this is the last of my example, which is Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangralaya in Mumbai. It has a platinum IGBC rating in heritage building. So we saw a shopping mall. We saw a commercial building. We have, uh, uh, you know, affordable housing. We have residential housing. We have heritage building. So various categories of house, uh, different structures can be a green building. So I highly recommend you, you visit the website of Indian Green Building Council, which I've, I'm, I'm giving in the description below and go through the rating systems and the guidelines provided for each type of building. And I also highly recommend you follow them on Facebook because they keep updating pictures with details of the new uh, green buildings which have been certified in India. So that's it for today. I hope you learned from something from this. If you have any doubts, you can put it in the comments below. Thank you.